tonight on season 25. Favorite things. This is the very last favorite things show we will ever do. It's my favorite things, ultimate style. And buy a bunch of flickering lights and it's all they have to do is cost money. It turned into panic. Have we bitten off more than we can chew? Let's see what they are. Are you ready? Mark Furman. We've had a lot of conversations with him, and he's not coming on the show to defend himself about being a racist. It has been beat to death. I'm done with it. Over the past 24 years, you've seen me as the face of The Oprah Show. But I do not do this alone. No, 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 no. Now meet the team behind the scenes. They are the best in the business. Do whatever you have to do. And see what really goes into making season 25. Fantastic. The biggest year of our lives. Well, you know, I can't even remember how the idea started to do favorite things, but favorite things has actually turned into one of my favorite things. Uh, I went into favorite things this year knowing that I'm going to do it and do it as big and loud as we can. Now, one of my favorite things in the world is surprising people. And nobody ever knows when they're here that it is going to be the favorite thing show. And this whole idea of becoming known for giving away things was not how I started out or what I really intended. I know for sure that the things of the favorite things is the least of the experience. It's the experience, it's the idea that that can happen to you. This entire hour is a tribute to great teachers everywhere who give and give, and that is why I wanted to give you the hottest ticket in television! It's the fun of it. It's sharing that moment with 300 other people. It's acknowledging that surprise and fantastical, sensational, wonderful, happy things can still occur in your life. That's what Favorite Things is all about. What we want to do is deck this joint out so that it looks like a store. It's a show over uh, all the possible customized items for Favorite Things. My name is Brian. I'm a co-producer on The Oprah Winfrey Show, and I've been here for about seven years. We're doing it this early because companies, if they're going to do custom products, need like all this advanced time to get them done. Oprah's Favorite Things is one of our signature shows, clearly. I think the world knows that. If you don't, then you've been living under a rock. Um, it's where Oprah chooses her real life favorite things, the stuff she's digging at the moment, from sheets to chocolates to electronics, and gives it away to the whole audience. So everyone in the audience gets it. OK, so this just came in this morning. Today, we're doing our first Oprah presentation meeting for Favorite Things. Before we actually tape the show, we have several presentation meetings. Throughout the season, Oprah gives us notes, her people give us notes about what she likes, what she's eating, what she's sleeping on, what she's reading. And then we put them all out in this huge presentation. It's literally like we create a shopping mall. Recipe is here. Thank God. Oh this year, because it's the last year, we're customizing some of our products. You know, for obvious reasons, companies um, would kill to be on Favorite Things. You know, when they are featured on the show, their sales skyrocket, their website shut down. So, um, you know, giving away 300 to 350 items to the audience is really no big deal in comparison to the business they get. OK, Mama? Thank you. Look at this. My name is Jenna Kostelnik. I've been working at Harpo for 14 years, and I'm a senior producer. I've grown up with Favorite Things. I didn't start producing it. I was a PA working on Favorite Things, and I grew up along with the show, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. So should we divide up? You want me to do these guys? You want to be like that? Sure. I'm Caroline Ziv, and I'm one of the producers on Favorite Things. And Jenna and I work together, and our teams work together to put together everything that's involved, from the products to the sets to the scripts. We do it all. I like the earrings, too. I, I, I'm not as wild about those, but... Yeah. All right, well, let's move these back, then. This is the very last favorite thing show we will ever do. You know, the bar is set high, so I assigned the whole project to Jenna and Caroline. They are a force when they come together. Brian? He's here. Yep. Can you... <laughs> Could you take stop the eating the popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> And I love Garrett. No, he can't touch anything. He's got cheesy hands. So Oprah's about to walk into the presentation meeting, and it's been nuts. It's been last minute. Some stuff just arrived, so we're throwing stuff on the table. Another late edition. I think these should be the Philip Stein boxes. 
It's just crazy, and it always is. And Chelsea and I are running around with our heads cut off, getting it together. Shoot. Hello, favorite kids. That is right there, for sure. These are right here, for sure. For me, it's like Christmas morning, but not for myself. It's like getting to experience Christmas morning through the eyes of everybody else who's going to receive all these wonderful gifts and choosing what I think, what I really like, because it has to be a favorite thing. Other, I can't say it is if I don't really like it. <laughs> I think this was originally the, the, one of the first favorite things. I mean, yes. I've given Uggs to everybody, as you know. Uh, I've given Uggs. Including everybody at Harpo. Everybody at Harpo, I've given Uggs. Oh my goodness. Love that. Love the sequin Uggs. So you, you want to start with food first? Is there an organization? Well, this is not the big meeting. This is not the big meeting. Oh gosh, no. This is just... What meeting is this? Welcome to... The reason we're looking at these items is because these have potential to be custom made for this year's favorite things. Wow. And our friends would need some time to at their make workshops them. to make them. So philosophy. Our favorite, favorite thing of all time from philosophy is the original hope in a jar. And, and what they now have it is in a big... Gigantic hope, hope in yeah. a jar. Do you think they'd give away the big gigantic yes. hope in a jar? Yes, of course. Of course they would. My role during this favorite things meeting is really to take notes, to pay attention to what Oprah's saying. A lot of what she'll say in this meeting, we will actually put into the script that you'll see on the show. Do you remember this sweater? So, uh, Ralph, personally, would like to make this sweater your sweater. That is my favorite sweater right there, because it's flattering on everybody. It's fantastic. Philip Stein, as you know, they have come up with kind of a very cool idea. So on the inside, can you see the little O? Oh, that's nice. Or you could have not diamonds on the outside and a I think tuna people prefer behind. diamonds than yes. non diamonds. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> there are a lot of things that uh, were presented to me, and I'd say, well, do I like it? Do I not really like it? Is it a favorite or is it just kind of a like? That's not doing it for me right okay. now. Thank you. Some things are more favorite than others, you know? So we obviously are going to be giving away iPads, are we not? Well, we... Well, it is one of your favorite things. You're, you're crazy for it. I would say it's an appendage. I would say it's an appendage. I go nowhere without it. We started hearing about Oprah's love of the iPad last year. Then we're in the presentation, and she brings up the iPad again. The question is, number one, will they give it away? Number two, they're, they're having trouble keeping them in the stores. They can't, they, you may not have enough. None of us want to say, Ugh, we don't know if we can get the iPad for favorite things, but we're going to keep trying. So yeah, let's get let's get now. some intel. OK, great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hi, Ty. Jill Van Lokeren, senior supervising producer, red-haired beauty, gorgeous on the outside, on the inside, equally gorgeous, and a perfectionist. She's the kind of producer where she knows that love is in the details and really rides her team, Terry and Lindsay, to be better than the best all the time. Mark Berman. Hey, Mark, it's Jill, Lindsay, and Terry. How are you? Hi, good. Today, we are supposed to find out if former LAPD detective Mark Furman is going to do the show. Mark Furman, you know, everybody remembers the O.J. Simpson trial. During the O.J. Simpson trial, tapes came out of him using racial slurs. And, you know, ultimately, he affected the verdict of the O.J. Simpson trial. Thanks for your time. We just wanted to follow up with you personally. You know, we pitched the idea of having you on season 25. Oprah loves the idea. We are excited about the idea. Oprah thinks you'd be an interesting person to talk to, you know, if you're up for it. I wanted to talk to Mark Furman again because it's fascinating to me how one single decision that a person makes can affect the rest of your life. So I wanted to be able to talk to Mark Furman just to see all these years later what happened to his life. When we're, OK. Here, here, here let, 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 me, let yeah. me kind of state this. I think you guys are all well-intentioned, and I think Oprah is too. And I, you know, and it, there's nothing with any malice. But if it wasn't for race or racism, would you even know my name? 
Yes, we know you because of the O.J. Simpson trial. What's happened to you? How are you doing? The impact this has had on your life? I think that's interesting to talk about. So then there's nothing about race in the show, not a word. You know, what? let me say this. We don't want to upset you. We don't want to take you someplace you don't want to go. You know, look. Yeah, but I don't, I, but I don't want to talk about race. Mark doesn't want to talk about race. It's, it's like Greg Brady not wanting to talk about the Brady Bunch. I mean, <laughs> that's a jumping off point, and we can take it uh, to now, and what you've learned, and, and what we can learn from you. Why? Where's that going to go? I already know what I feel. It has been beat to death. I'm done with it. No one's looking to bring you back to a bad place. We see it as a, a platform to talk about that. I just don't want to waste my time. I have wasted 15 years of my life with this crap. Nobody was worth it. To find out Mark's on the fence, uh, that was that was a little shocking. And then to know we told Oprah about it, and now to be like, we don't know if we have him? I mean, that wasn't good. Mark, let me ask you this. Are there circumstances which this is appealing to you or not? Well, let me put it this way. When you go on something that has 20 million people watching, you should have something very heartfelt and important to say without the cloud of on both ends. That's it. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a conversation and report back. We'll talk to you soon. Take Bye. Care. Bye. He's angry. He's mad. He's really mad. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to do it. Coming up. He's not coming on the show to defend himself about being a racist. You can't have Mark Furman on without talking about racism, because otherwise, why would we be talking to you, Mr. Furman? Let's see what they are. Are you ready? You must know you don't have room for all of this. So what is your plan? What is your strategy here? Are you ready for? Mark Furman. Jill V. Terry. Hello. Hello. All right. Mark was a bit of a tough booking, but we stuck to our guns. And we spent the last few weeks, you know, calling Mark Furman. And he said yes. So he was on in 1997. So this is perspective on 25 years. Bronco Chase denying he ever used racial slurs, then the damaging tapes, and ultimately a perjury conviction for lying under oath. And he feels responsible more for the case getting thrown off track because it became about race instead of the facts. Yeah. He is responsible for that. Well, he feels that. But having said all that, we've had a lot of conversations with him, and he's not coming on the show to defend himself about being a racist. He's been there. He's done that. He's apologized to you. He's apologized to the human race. So why is he here? When we meet with Oprah to go over the fine details of a show, and she's not into something, or she's not sure about something, or she challenges you on something, I mean, that's not a good feeling. That is scary right there. We asked him to be here because he's one of those infamous, notorious newsmaker characters mm -hmm. that we wanted to know how being a part of really the first media circus. This has made a mockery of justice and murder trials and that type well, of thing. Well, the media changed after this. He would say it, be, it made murder entertainment. I mean, the media just continues to sh do shows about them. And uh, a good murder case is material for weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The truth is, you can't have Mark Furman on without talking about race, racism, and O.J. Simpson. I mean, because otherwise, why would we be talking to you, Mr. Furman? But I also understand his reluctance to do so. Because if you're looking at him as a man, a human being, a father, a husband, a citizen of his community, whatever it is he's now doing, he's trying to move on with his life. But let's try to broaden it, ladies and gentlemen here. How do you connect this to the uh, audience and broaden it so that it's not just his story, so that it becomes about a pivotal moment in your life? You can't take it back. Mm -hmm. And that moment changes the trajectory of your life forever. I was always fascinated by the fact that had he admitted 
that he used the N-word in that courtroom, how different that outcome of that trial might have been or could have been. It's literally a decision in character that you have to make, and that's the test that he failed. We know from Mark Furman, he doesn't want to focus on race. And then we meet with Oprah, and she has a lot of questions for him about race. But we have to figure out how's this going to work, and everyone's going to walk away happy. Moving on. Bye. Gotcha. Bye. I'm in here by myself? Not a soul? Not a soul. OK. Get my little iPad thing going. I would just say the iPad has revolutionized everything that I do. It changed the way I operate. It changed the way I watch the news. It changed uh, information and how I received it. It changed the way I communicate. It changed, you know, now I, I take notes on it. I send email through it. I do everything on it. Please wait. Begin workout now. Ooh, ooh. I think it's the greatest invention of this um, well, we only went 11 years into this century, so, so far, best one. I'm playing Scrabble while I work out. So, since that really is the most favorite of the favorite things I've ever had as a favorite favorite, it was very important to me to have the iPad as a favorite thing. iPad should definitely be on the favorite things list. We got a, a no. We got a no? Apple has been elusive. They don't need us to promote any of their gadgetry or their innovation or their technology. They like to control that themselves. So uppers bumped. I guess it's going to take me a moment with the iPad. I know. I don't know. I'm I don't sorry. know how to explain it. They just said no. They said no. You know, they were the first people to give out the... I remember when we gave out um, iPods on here. That was the first place we gave out. Uh, we gave out iPods one Christmas. Yeah. Before I knew what one was, and all the men were like, whoa! Yeah. Remember? And we gave iPod Nanos. iPod Nanos, on we gave show. those. On these, okay. When I heard that wasn't going to happen, I was sick about it. Really sick about it. I was thinking about buying 300, and the only reason I wouldn't buy the 300 is because I thought it would be unfair to all the other people who were donating their products for our Favorite Things show. They know that you love it, and they, they certainly appreciate... Everybody loves it. Everybody they loves appreciate it. They appreciate the offer, they just can't do it. OK. We shall move on. Coming up. This is the fanciest, danciest thing I've ever seen. Holy moly moly. Isn't that amazing? I am a little nervous that Oprah wants to talk about things that Mark isn't totally comfortable talking about, for sure. What do you wish you had said when you were asked if you'd ever use the N-word? Can I grab you for a minute? Because I just, I have limited time. We're only offering four pairs of shoes. So let's just display four. You know, this is the last presentation meeting. So I think we're going to really try and pack it with more items than ever before, just to give a final big bang from our buck. This is the yes section, right? Mm-hmm. Can we move that either to the end or to the beginning? Is this the cruise? Yes, and it has looping B-roll. For some reason, our looping B-roll isn't looping. It just stops. It Oprah's about to come down, and let's hope it goes well. Hey, Cher, can you come down to my office, please? Yep, on my way. OK. Hey, so, um, you know, we're going to go do favorite things. And I was thinking yeah. about, I, you know, the thing I called you about this morning? Yep. Uh, having Andre, who doesn't know that he's going to be a favorite thing. Andre has done my hair for the past 25 years. He has never asked for anything in 25 years and never tried to do any business other than just being there to do my hair. So when I heard that he was thinking about doing this product line, I wanted to um, help him. So I thought we would surprise Andre. Finally, after all of these years, he's created a shampoo 
after 25 years of doing my where hair. Where anybody else would have done it in the first year? Yes, where anybody else would have done it in the first year. And actually, I encouraged him to do it. So you're going to choose that? And I'm going to choose that. As a favorite thing? As a favorite thing. Because it really is a favorite thing. Okay, Let's so we're going to go. So I don't know. They'll get him down there somehow. I'll, t I'll t have him come down to do my hair. I'll tell him to come down and do my hair. And then let's see what happens, okay? I'm going to try not to cry. Oh, I think I'm going to. Sadie, you're acting like you're going. You're not going. Just stop that little wag. Take that wag out of your tail. You're not going. Take Sadie. She thinks she's going. She's not. Hello, logging room. Love the loggers. They just sit there logging things. Here, I'm going to get okay. ahead of you. OK, wait, wait, wait. Let me see if they're ready. Let me see. Let's see what they are. Are you ready? OK. Oh, my gosh. Welcome to Favorite Things 2010. For the producing team, one of our favorite things is to create hours of delight for Oprah, to build this fantasy store filled with things that have delighted her all year long is fun. Well, is there a reason to have this kind of fancy dancy thing going on here? Well, no, it's the last time. I love this team because over the years, I've had favorite things presented to me every kind of way, like in my office lined up so everything's, you know, all over the floor. I've had them, you know, in the hallway. I've had things lined up in the conference room. I've had, but I thought this year, if they went all out, just to present favorite things in such a, you know, everything's in the presentation. This is the fanciest, danciest thing I've ever seen. Second only to the actual taping of the show is the presentation for Oprah. It's like planning a wedding to sort of like bring all that stuff together, present it in a beautiful way, then, you know, whittle it down to the very, very favorites, which is not always easy. Let's start with the food. <laughs> Let's start with the chocolate. OK, there's my pie. Oh, why did I eat? Why did I just eat lunch? The Baker's Edge pan. This is one of my favorite things. You made this just so I could taste it so yeah. we could see that? Holy moly, moly, moly. That's a genius. She's literally writing the script. Her holy moly, moly, or that's a wowzer. That's why this team is the best in TV, because they could have just told me, you know what? You get corners. But no, they make lasagna and brownies. I'm gonna this is my all-time favorite croissant. Love, love. So I thought the presentation was so outstanding. I got a taste of macaroni, and I got to taste all the brownies. It's fantastic. 3D TV from Sony. 3D TV, yay! Oh, love these guys. You just want to go. You do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You should see through here like this. See, look right through there. Look right through the lens. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? All right, that's okay. a yes. That's Yay. a yes. Yay. Here we go continuing on. This... I have one for you. I have a special person I'm bringing in as a surprise. Yeah. Veronica, yeah. would you call Libby and tell her Oprah needs a touch up in Studio Two from Andre? So these okay. With her hair. This is your current yes list. Andre. Andre, can you come to fix my hair, please? Yes. Thank you. Hi, Andre. Mm -hmm. You you generally can do 20 things and it do this side, Andre. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Well, OK, there's one more thing I really want to do that's not listed here. Andre Walker is starting his own line of uh, shampoos. And so I would like to do Andre Walker's shampoo. Not a peep, not a poop, not a tear. We broke him down. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Andre. You made the cut. I know. You made the cut. It's a hard cut. Look at what you're up against in this room. <laughs> oh, wow. When she told me that my hair care line would be part of favorite things, I, you know, my mind went blank for a minute. I couldn't believe it. And then I thought how generous of her. And, It's a great shampoo, too. I use it all the time. Yes. Yes, it gives you that bouncing and behaving thing. Very nice. Very good. 
very good. You know, I know it's such a big thing to, to be a part of. And I know there were tons of people that wished that they could have been a part of that. And the fact that she thought enough of me to put me in it, it was, it was very heartwarming. Unbelievable. Tell her what to say. Thank you. Oh, that's so very nice. Yay! Yay! He's such a good person and has been so loyal. I've been his number one and only customer for 25 years. So to be able to give something back to him was really moving, touching for me. Andre Walker, shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> Coming up. Nobody was worth it. When the interview first started, I don't know what he was saying. I don't understand what he's saying. What it's say like he's not answering the question. Where? I got to figure out how to get him back on track. Harriet is here with a Christmas miracle. Oh, no! As you all are presenting all of this, for goodness heaven's sakes, you, you must know you don't have room for all of this. After seeing all that they had presented, there was no way I was gonna put myself in the position that I've been in in past years, where I feel like a crazy rabbit, where I am talking at the speed of sound, trying to get everything in and rushing to get everything in. So what is your plan? What is your strategy here? Well, it was originally to hear what your favorites were. Of these riches, which would be your favorite? riches. I think you need two days. I think you need two days of favorite things. <gasps> really? Let's do it. <laughs> Didn't bother me one bit seeing them looking all stunned. I thought, they'll get over it. They'll walk out of the room and <laughs> talk amongst themselves. They'll get over it. God, oh, my God. Because there is no way, looking at this, you're going to get through this. Two hour special? Let's do it. Maybe two different like, audiences? You absolutely cannot give one audience all this stuff. That would double the party. When Oprah said, let's make favorite things two shows, there's the good news, and then there's the reality like, oh my God, that's twice as much work. The, the way to do it is to stretch it out over two, two days. Two days of favorite things. Two days oh of favorite things. Either you're going to do two days or you're not going to do it. Because I wasn't going to be able to eliminate so many things and wanted to be able to get them all in and to give each of them their proper focus. Oprah, it's never been done. <laughs> Today is the day, Mark Furman is coming. And you know, I'm, my fingers are crossed. I hope everybody has a great experience. Happy A show? Yeah, happy A show, because there's only one. <laughs> happy one show day. You really need to soften this a line under your collar. Do you know the last time you had comments on my. <laughs> you sent me in a tizzy? Take a, a little Just brown a pencil, or no, I, I think that black pencil's too, too heavy for her. Okay. Much better. Now I can talk to you. It was hard for me to talk to you. It was you. distracting. It was distracting. Okay. Me. Okay, so take us back. So now I'm gonna start over. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Happy <laughs> Monday or one day. So. Thanks, Tara. I feel much better. So the top's very visual. You're just reading, and we have all these cool LED graphic mm -hmm. visual. I could tell that the team was a little nervous about Mark Furman, his reaction once he got here and what he was really willing to say on the air. We thought it'd be nice just for you to cruise by the green room and just say hi to Mark. You know, quick, you don't have to get into anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel much better now. Oh, yeah, you look better, too. Thanks. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, I'm gonna burn that eyeliner. <laughs> I don't go and talk to the guests beforehand. I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. You haven't changed much. You haven't either. <laughs> Seems like I just saw you 12 yeah, years ago. 12 years ago. My yeah. God. You look, I'm looking forward to it. I have found that people end up saying things to you in the private moment that when you try to get them to say it again on camera, they feel like they're repeating themselves. So I don't like to do that unless I feel the guest needs some reassurance, unless I need to be clear about intention. Are you ready? Absolutely. Are you, you feel comfortable yeah. or, or the direction we're going? I, I think, yeah. So I, by the end of the show, you want people to know or feel or think what? Well, I, I just, uh, I think that they should know that they got 
a half of a story. Well, we'll talk about that on TV. Shall see you. Mr. Berman. Okay. 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 We'll, uh, Great. Go this way. I am a little nervous that Oprah wants to, you know, talk about things that Mark isn't totally comfortable talking about, for sure. Three, two, and roll, Dave. You, Oprah. 1995, the O.J. Simpson trial. The players became instant celebrities, including Los Angeles police detective Mark Furman. You know, he had some definite hesitations about some of the things that Oprah would talk about, but he can't come and then, you know, no comment and I'm not answering that question. Like he has got to give the interview that is worthy of season 25. So it all hinges on if Mark comes to play, if Mark brings it for the interview. Well, it's been 13 years. Mark Furman is back today. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing better than I was then. I think a lot of people who have used the N-word in their life, and that does not mean you are racist because you use the N-word. Oprah started asking all these questions that started hindering on the boundaries of where Mark was a little bit uncomfortable. What do you wish you had said when you were asked if you'd ever use the N-word? What do you wish you had well, said? Well, you know, um, there, was, there was absolutely no answer because after all, it's always the question. Mm -hmm. It's never the answer. Oh, let me just tell you, when the interview first started, I don't know what he was saying. I am watching him sort of flailing all over the place. I don't know where he's going, and he's just said a couple of sentences, and I'm off track. I don't know where he is. The, the I don't understand what he's what saying. He it's say like he's not answering say. a question. I'm, what I'm curious to know is... Now i got to figure out how to get him back on track. Coming up. I want, I want to take a break so they can collect themselves. I'm not going to take a break, Dean. So oh. stop raising your hand there. Would you want to sit down? It's my favorite things, ultimate style. From joy, 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 it turned into panic. Buy a it's bunch still of money. Lights it's still, still money. Dollars. It's still it costs money. Have we bitten off more than we can chew? I, I think there's a lot of gobbledygook here. Is it, is it me, or am I not understanding what he's saying? Oprah started asking all these questions that started hindering on the boundaries of where Mark Furman was a little bit uncomfortable. His answers weren't totally clear. I'm going to have to go to break here in a minute, Dean. He read Murder in Brentwood, and he knows Do you want to just keep going, Cher? Sure. Are you like that? I want, I want to take a break so they can collect themselves. I don't think she sees from here. I'm going to take a break. I, actually, I'm not going to take a break, Dean. Oh. So stop raising your hand there. Okay. <laughs> there um, you go, you... Missy. It is my job to try to help that person articulate what it is I know they're trying to express. I could tell he was feeling anxious, basically going around and around and around saying nothing, trying not to say what he really was feeling, because he's afraid that he's going to open up that door again. I often have dreams of interviewing O.J. Simpson. I have dreams of interviewing O.J. Simpson and him confessing to me. <laughs> Do you have those dreams? No, I don't have those dreams. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden, Oprah gets in her groove. Mark settles down. He can hear the question. He's answering it from his heart. It's more in internal. And now you're watching a conversation between two people. Would you want to sit down and talk to him? Oh, yes. And what would you want to say to him? First thing I'd say is I know you didn't mean to kill two people and you didn't go there for that and it wasn't a first degree murder. Oh, okay. And then when Oprah like goes right there and asks him about OJ and he gives this bombshell answer, I mean, the interview just took off from there. I mean, it was amazing. Then the second thing would be. <laughs> Talk to me because nobody has given you a chance to say just exactly how it happened and how you got caught up in it. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is so good. Blood. Thank you for this time. Thank, Thank you. you. I don't want anybody to feel disrespected. I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable, but in the end. I thought it was great because the truth in any form will set you free. I thought it was great. 
but that was he really came good. to play. I mean, that was a... really good, good work. You know, Oprah doesn't do interviews with boundaries. She kept going there and going there, and I have to say, Mark handled it beautifully, and he went with it, and he had really good answers. It's funny, what he feared the most, I think ended up being one of the most interesting interviews he's ever done, and maybe one of the best things he's done for his career. Oprah decides that she's gonna do not one, which is a killer. One favorite things will drop you, but she wants to do two favorite things. Our workload literally just doubled. It's my favorite things, ultimate style. Woo! There's two different sets with 600 people. It's a lot. There is a reason why we haven't done that before. Over here, we have another conveyor belt contraption thing looping around here. Hey, look, uh, he, he, here's the deal. I, we're going to work something out. Tara's going to work something fine. out. We we're going to do a little stage out here. We'll yeah. find out if it's one row, two rows, whatever. But we'll make that look good. It's hard enough to do that show once in a day, but then to do it twice in a day. It's double the product. It's double the audience. There are so many challenges. It, it's unbelievable. These are some wheelie doodads which are gonna twirl. Santa's workshop. This is the, a gingerbread house that opens. So the whole set basically is moving parts. This is probably the most elaborate set uh, we've ever done for favorite things. There's a lot of concern on my part about the complexities of Oprah moving around all of the uh, favorite things and the presentation of them. One of the things we're talking about is where Oprah is going to be for this, because the first thing that comes to mind is there is going to be no stage for Oprah to be on because we're closed down. We're closed down completely. OK. She can't stand in front of the closed down? It's like, holy bleep. How are we going to get this all done? I can go to Costco and buy a it's bunch of flickering lights and all they have to do is It costs money. Every product has to have a different way of being revealed. On set, we'll have, uh, I mean, won't we have the actual watch somewhere else yes. other than her wrist? Yes. The teddy bears are holding the boxes of earrings. I have an idea of how much work is going to go into favorite things, but I have such confidence and such belief in my team, I, I don't worry about it. I know that it's going to be done. There's, there's just nothing that I think that they cannot do. I believe in them. Okay, let's go. That's the A show. Moving on, B. Okay, ladies, right here you have 350 herb savers. I want this palette done in the next 15 minutes, okay? Girls, knock it out. Come on. Not only do you have to get the things here, and then to come up with a way to present it with lots of surprises along the way. I think we need to make sure that whatever we decide to send down the chute works, and it, we might have to swap it out with something else because it might not work down the chute. We'll make it so that it comes down. That it works. The only issue that you're going to have with that is timing. That's all it's ever going to okay. be about. And here's the deal. If timing was a problem, we would just do the same object multiple times and have it come three times. From what turned into, like, joy, 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 it turned into panic. Have we bitten off more than we can chew? Harriet is here with a Christmas miracle. No. <laughs> true. It's true. Yay! Oprah's favorite thing. iPad. Scrabble on the iPad. Scrabble. It's all yours. For everyone. To give to the world. When we walked into Oprah's office and Harriet delivered the news that the iPad was a go, I mean, you could have heard a pin drop. You did not pull that off. Pulled it off. Da -da -da. Are you praying? <laughs> No. She's trying not to cry. No. This is the best, this is the best invention of, I think, of the century, personally. I, 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 I compare it to the car. Harriet works for us behind the scenes fearlessly for 18 years now. And she was working this thing. I don't know what they were doing. I don't even know how they did it because first I was told it is not going to happen. You must give up the iPad dream. It's not going to happen. Oh, my gosh. Three cheers to the Never Give Up team, man. Yeah. To the Never Give Up team. That is the best thing. I mean, good God, too bad we're not ending the season right now. <laughs>
iPad. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> I have spoken. People, it is my favorite thing of all time. Oh, my gosh. Here, I got to give you a hug for that. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet is one of the people who I trust to represent me in a way that um, is integrity filled and um, she really gets what this show is all about and what it stands for and what we're trying to do. I gotta sit with that for a minute. I just can't. I know. I really, it's I unbelievable. You, I know. You know why? Because I love it so much. I, know. I really do. I know it's a thing. I know. But <laughs> you do. I know. And the whole audience is gonna get our dad. Oh my God. She's I, know. I know how life changing this is gonna be for people. Yeah. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was a deep reaction. You know why? It wasn't for me, because I had one. The reaction was for everyone else now getting to have that experience. In case you don't know by now, I mean, my greatest joy is having other people have joy. So I get more joy the more people have joy. So then I'm just like, uh, joy filled, you know, my cup runneth over. I mean, when you're about to do the most spectacular show in history and you're gonna be like, sure wish I would've had that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I wish I had that iPad. I was really like, well, how am I gonna do a favorite thing show without my fair favorite, favorite number one old time favorite thing? Now, I don't mess with God for things like iPads. I use God for major issues like health concerns or danger, safety, prayers for that. I don't go around praying for iPads, but I think God must have known it's too much. <laughs> Do you need to take to your sofa? <laughs> I, mean, I can't take it. Next time on season 25. It's my favorite! This is awesome. Right. I never thought I'd be we in a snow globe. <laughs> It's the limited edition Philip Stein. Drop the watch. Dropped it too low that time. That's what rehearsal's for. We gotta get it closer, we gotta get it tighter. Okay, now where? Oprah has placed her faith in you, and when it's not coming together, you're like, I have failed. You okay? It's a boatload of stuff. I don't know if we can fit it all in. <laughs> Just having a flip out. Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.